Hello and welcome back to the Archoria Synthy B tutorial series. Today we're having a look at the advanced joystick options beyond what we get from the main synth. Again, all of these advanced pages are extra functionality that Archoria have implemented on top of their faithful reproduction of the synth itself. So they've taken the concepts and simply enhanced them. Let's have a look at the joystick. So we need to enable the joystick page itself. And then inside, you can see that we've now got two brand new um, modulation destinations, nothing to do with the primary settings over here. Don't get confused with the joystick's own internal pin matrix values. These are on top of all of that stuff. So if I map the X destination to, uh, let's say filter, frequency, then as soon as I've selected a destination, this box appears and we get this nice big friendly J button in the middle. This always corresponds to the joystick's current value. So if I pick the joystick up and move it, you can see that they always sync up one for one. Double click, sets it back to the center point. And what we can do is generate basically paths over which the joystick will virtually travel over a certain period of time. Now you won't see the UI update visibly, but it will follow this path. And we can generate um, points on the path simply by clicking anywhere on the screen. And you can see that now we've got this pulse traveling. So without me doing anything else with that really simple example, let's just Get a, get a note going. So we're coming out of the filter straight to our output. And I'm going to just increase the percentage on this uh, X mod destination value and let's see what happens. Stupid inverted filter settings. So now you can see the joystick basically virtually traveling along that path. We have access to the range controls again from the master synthesizer. So if I change the range knob down here, the range value in the advanced page changes and vice versa. Just as we saw when we looked at the functions page in the last video, any of these points can be edited down below by, by basically clicking in the value and then dragging up and down with your mouse, or you can pick the point up and move it. But unlike on the envelope page where you right click a point to delete that point, if I right click anywhere in this chart, it simply deletes the last point on the path so if I create a bunch of sequential points here and then right click anywhere, it just takes them away one at a time. So there's no way to delete this point itself. You always throw the last one away. We can change the amount of time that each individual um, point journey takes. So click on this one and can increase or decrease the rate individually for that node. And we've also got this really cool button up here, generate, which will generate a random, completely random set. Let's get the sound going again. And speed it up a bit. So can you see that uh, we've got this rate multiplier? If I increase that, that's basically slowed all of these down. So it's going to take 50 seconds to travel from one stage to the next. But similarly, if I pull this right down below one, it's going to get faster and faster and faster. Just got us back to a nice simple shape and I've introduced an envelope so that I can show you these functions over here. Everything we've seen until now has been in loop mode, which basically means this shape is being drawn again and again and again. If I turn loop mode off, you see this X1 just suddenly turned blue. This allows us to specify a number of times 
that the shape will be drawn each time it receives a keyboard input. So if I press a key on the keyboard, it does the filter, and then can you see it's holding the filter at the end point of the drawn shape. It's holding it here with the, the, the sharp, bright filter. Set this to times two. Get exactly the same thing, but every, every new key instruction will basically fire that joystick motion twice. Then we can apply the rate multiplier on top. That's still set from earlier when we set it very, very fast. So now the entire shape will be much slower. Reset speaks for itself, just throws the entire thing away. Let's just draw a new shape. And at the end of this second loop, it'll stop destination point and then hold there until it receives a new keyboard signal and it begins the journey again. Now this shape that we've drawn applies to all four of these modulation destinations so if I hop over to the Y modulation now and set us up to modulate oscillator one's frequency see it's the same pattern. Right click a couple of times throw a couple of those nodes away go back to the X mod and it's immediately saying, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to map it to? If you close that down, you've still got the same shape. So there's only a single path that you can um, draw and then it'll apply to all four of the modulation destinations. We can also click this um, map mod wheel to Y button, which guess what this does? So I'm now moving my modulation wheel up and down and that's tying the modulation wheel to the joystick itself, which is the J button at the beginning of the journey. So let's hear those two modulation destinations operating simultaneously at 35%. That's going to be a really intense pitch sweep. How cool is that? So it's the Y axis that's controlling the pitch, and the X axis that's controlling the frequency. And it got to the second, the end of the second journey, and then the key trigger um, expired. Put it in loop mode, and it'll just do that infinitely. That sounds really good. That's all for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe. Uh, you'll be sure not to miss the uh, the next video in which we'll cover the pretty hefty modulations page. See you then.